uh, we're not entirely sure as to how or why we've gone so long into this series without reviewing a single Gradius game. Well, so long as you don't count Onimadius or Parodius, and we don't. So in conjunction with the RF Generation Shmup Club run by longtime viewer Game Boy Guru, we thought it was just about time, and what better game to start with than Gradius 3? Gradius 3 is, of course, a horizontal scrolling shooting game developed and published by Konami. It was originally released to Japanese arcades in 1989, with the Super Famicom getting a port in 1990 and the Super NES getting its own version in 1991. We could have sworn there was also a PAL version of the Super NES release, but insofar as we can tell, it never got a PAL release. The arcade version of Gradius 3 was later ported to the PlayStation 2 and PlayStation Portable worldwide with various enhancements and features, but this review will focus on the Super Famicom version. The North American Super NES version is, for all intents and purposes, identical to its Japanese counterpart, so let's take a closer look. Gradius as a series had a long line of releases, and they all had more or less the same setup at their cores for their general gameplay. Typically speaking, players make their way around the screen via the D-pad using standard 8-way directional control. In the case of the Super Famicom version, the B button fires the Vic Viper's main shots. As certain enemies or waves are taken out, orange power-up chips are dropped that will light up a section of the bar along the bottom of the screen. This power-up bar will cycle through one space at a time when a power-up chip is collected. When the desired section is lit, the player can press the A button to select the power-up and its effects are then applied to the Vic Viper. Getting through any Gradius game typically requires very precise and efficient power-up management, and Gradius 3 is no exception. Getting the right amount of speed without going too far, grabbing shields at the right time, knowing when to spawn a glowing orange multiple of your ship known as an option, and more, are critical in making it further into the game. The Vic Viper's loadout can vary as well. On the outset of the game, a selection of four presets can be chosen with the player's choice of force field or shield barrier types. These selections are sufficient for regular play, but Gradius 3 also has an extensive edit mode. This edit mode not only lets players mix and match various weapons and defensive measures, but it also gives the player choices that aren't available otherwise. This huge amount of choice makes for a very flexible game that should allow players with very different tastes to enjoy the game in a way that suits them best. Gradius 3 also adds an additional segment to the power bar, indicated with an exclamation point. This section is for special power-ups like speed down, refreshing shields to full power, trading lives for options, and even an on-command screen-clearing mega crush. This adds an even more strategic element to the Gradius formula, and it's something that hasn't been seen in the mainline series ever since. We typically feel very comfortable with three speed pickups and a full loadout of options, dual rear-fire missiles, tail gun double, twin lasers, and reduced shields. Of course, resisting the urge to collect every power-up chip on the screen is also something players should be aware of as well. Keeping the section of the power bar lit for shields when the shield in play is lost is a great example. Especially in the case of the formation and rolling options, keeping the option space lit with a full complement of them allows players to expand the option's formation by pressing the A button. This is super handy when chewing away environmental barriers or clipping through areas to catch and destroy enemies that normally can't be hit. Additionally, there is also a blue power chip that is sometimes dropped, which will clear the screen of small enemies, but not shots or environmental hazards like rocks, bubbles, or fireballs. The Mega Crush, therefore, is much more handy in a pinch if a screen-clearing solution is required, since it will also take out enemy shots. Still, especially when taking out entire swaths of popcorn enemies to get as many power-up chips as possible, blue chips can come in very handy so long as they're still on the screen. Gradius 3 on Super Famicom plays over the course of 10 stages, which were remixed from the arcade version and slightly reordered. Every stage has its own unique flavor, and there's definitely plenty to shoot, though a number of enemies are missing from this particular version. The lions made of sand in Stage 1, for example, are totally missing, and the spiders at the Stage 1 boss are replaced with little squirming alien bugs. Despite a slight loss of content, each stage is of reasonable length and offers a decent amount of challenge on normal and above. As always, huge bosses challenge players at the end of each area, and the Super Famicom version even has new bosses that weren't found in the arcade version. Gradius 3 also features many of the hallmarks that the series is known for. Bubble and Moai stages, boss rushes, and speed traps all make their iconic appearances. And of course, several stage end bosses that require you to shoot the core. On normal and above, there is also a new hazard. Players will have to contend with the Option Hunter, which appears on the left-hand side of the screen and flies out to capture and steal a player's options. If an option is caught, it is permanently lost with no way to recover it. The player will need to collect chips to activate a new option when this happens. Knowing how to maneuver through the hazards on screen to avoid the Option Hunter is definitely useful, and can be fairly easy to accomplish with just a little practice and patience. Of course, Gradius 3 also has a dark side to it. 
If the player ends up dying, the player will be sent back to a checkpoint and the Vic Viper will basically return as a sluggish, underpowered iron potato. Recovering the Vic Viper's power is a daunting challenge, especially in later stages, but it's not completely unreasonable on the Super Famicom, unlike the seemingly impossible arcade version. Still, Gradius 3 very much exhibits the now infamous Gradius Syndrome effect at death. There is also a huge amount of slowdown in the game as well, which is somehow only putting it lightly. Especially with four options in play, simply pressing the fire button will slow the game to a total crawl. This is actually pretty helpful in a number of stages though, so for once we can't really complain about this shortcoming, as it definitely helps in getting a pretty reasonable 1cc. It's kind of ironic actually, as far as Gradius games go, Super Famicom and Super NES Gradius 3 might just be the most accessible game in the whole series. This is in stark contrast to its arcade counterpart. You know, the one that's generally believed by most to be the hardest entry the series has ever seen, a sentiment that we can definitely agree with. Of course, beating the game throws you into a harder loop immediately, so there's that as well. But the short of the long of it is, Super Famicom Gradius 3 is the most fun we've had with a Gradius game to date, which is saying quite a bit. There's even an alternating two-player mode for those that want to see how they stack up to their friends. Ah, those were the days. <laughs> The scoring in Gradius 3 is very basic for the most part. Generally speaking, enemy destruction is all players need to take into consideration to get a decent score. Not even picking up power chips past full power-up status will enhance the score in any way. But Gradius 3 still finds ways to shake things up compared to other entries in the series. Gradius 3 has a series of hidden bonus stages throughout most of the game. Starting in Stage 2 and ending in Stage 7, a hidden bonus stage is able to be accessed by fulfilling specific conditions and flying to specific points in the stage in question. In Stage 2, for example, the stage can be accessed by flying the Vic Viper into the bottom gap in the stage's bubble boundaries. In Stage 3, this little patch below this rock face will also do it. These bonus stages offer the player a chance to collect yellow bonus chips that grant a score between 100 and 1000 points each depending how fast they are picked up in succession. Some of these chips also respawn, which adds to the score even more if the player can maintain their position where they reappear. There are even green chips that grant an instant extend when collected. If the player succeeds and makes it through the bonus stage, they will skip the boss and progress to the next stage. But if they die, they'll be sent back to a checkpoint within the actual stage with zero power-ups and the bonus stage will not be accessible again. The player score also carries over to harder loops, so a good player can start on a lower difficulty and marathon it all the way up through the more difficult modes to get a truly out-of-this-world score. The Extend score in Gradius 3 is also very reasonable, 20,000 points for the first Extend and then every 70,000 after that. So it all contributes to the player score in a decent manner, but that's also all there is to it, with no stage end bonuses or chaining or meddling or anything else really, at least as far as the non-bonus gameplay is concerned anyway. Players can rank into a local leaderboard with their initials, gender, and even horoscope, but of course there's absolutely no online components to this title and no battery backup save, so taking a picture of the ranking is all players can do to immortalize their scores on a forum of their choice. Gradius 3 in general has all of the accoutrements that makes it a logical step in the Gradius release timeline. It has better, more colorful 2D visuals than Gradius 2, but lacks the 3D flash of Gradius 4. On the home console scene, Gradius 3 does a pretty good job of looking and sounding pretty great up against all of the home console versions of Gradius 1 and 2, especially against the Famicom ports. PC Engine obviously comes closer, but even the Redbook audio of the Super CD version of Gradius 2 doesn't quite have the right flavor. Gradius 3's visuals have all of the hallmarks of a Super Famicom game with bright colors, good gradients, and a decent amount of animation when it comes to the sprites used for enemies, bosses, and the Vic Viper itself. It even has flashing lights. Its snazzy intro also features some great sprite work and snappy motion in stark contrast to the game's actual performance. Gradius 3 has decent sound effects that do a good job of not being annoying and the selection of voice clips in our opinion are better delivered than the arcade version, although the audio hints for each boss are absent. The music is the real star here though, with an excellent standout OST setting the tone for the game in great ways. Its soundtrack also seems to have a hint of a PC Engine feel to it with flourishes of that signature Super NES sound filling it out. All in all, pretty fantastic stuff. Rounding out the presentation is an easy to follow full English menu system and, especially in the case of the Super Famicom version in specific, an all English interface right down to the ending. This makes the Super Famicom version excellent for importers. Bonus! 
So how does Gradius 3 on Super Famicom stack up? Let's take a look. Gradius 3 controls well with a simple array of inputs, but the dreaded Gradius Syndrome on death can be a real run-stopper. Unlike the arcade version, Gradius 3 on Super Famicom is a reasonable challenge for newcomers on normal, and hard mode ramping things up for veterans. With 10 stages, lots of secrets, and multiple loops to play, Gradius 3 can last a long time, without overstaying its welcome. Scaled down from the arcade version, but better than all home versions of Gradius before it, the Super Famicom Gradius 3 looks great with all kinds of little details everywhere. Meanwhile, Gradius 3 has a fantastic soundtrack that is sure to get stuck in players' heads for a long while after playing. It's one of the most solid STG OSTs on the Super Famicom. Gradius 3 continued the Gradius lineage in ways that were very expected, but also added features that we'd never really see again. Its neat secret score paths and special power-ups make it stand apart, all while being much, much more accessible than its arcade alter ego. Comparatively speaking, Gradius 3 is a really affordable game, especially from Japan. North American versions of the game can also be had for very little cash, especially loose. Believe it or not, we've wanted to get this title for well over a decade, but having never found copies locally for all that time and kind of forgetting about it in the process, the RF Generation Shmup Club was a great excuse to take it on with a new appreciation of the genre in general. And what a time it was. Gradius 3 for Super Famicom gets a 4.25 out of 5. You can easily get copies of Gradius 3 for Super NES or Super Famicom at auction with relative ease. I remember renting and playing Gradius 3 in my much younger days and kind of getting frustrated with it at the time, having never seen Stage 4. We managed to get a 1cc on normal this time around though, so tie game Konami. Now, about that arcade version, yeesh. Speaking of yeesh, that STGC episode sure has taken its sweet time, but it's absolutely next on the docket, so look for it coming soon to the Studio Mudprints channel. See you in the next episode.